Hi, I'm William from Georgia Tech, and I'm going to introduce Astrosim 2.0, which is a joint work with Georgia Tech, Meta, and Intel. Uh, first, our with the motivation. So we are clearly in the era of large language models, like ChatGPT or Google Scholar. And the trend with these models are they are becoming ever larger. So, for example, those GPT-3 models already surpassed 175 billion model progress. It's not just the model size, the data set is also becoming super large. So I directly asked ChatGPT how large was your training data set, and it answered me it's about 570 gigabytes of uncompressed text data. And Google Bard as well, it was trained over a trillion words. So because of these large model size as well as large training data, training has become truly a, has become truly a key challenge. So when we talk about futuristic trillion parameter models, the number of floating point operations required to train it is about zeta scale, and the model itself will take tens of terabytes of memory footprint. And because of this, it's impractical to train these models on a single GPU. So assuming we only have one NVIDIA 300 GPU, it will take more than 350 years to train. That's why it's, it's necessary to distribute the training. So we have to shard the model and data across NPUs. Here, NPUs stands for Neural Processing Unit, which I use as an umbrella term for compute fabrics like GPU or TPU. So actually, the ChatGPT is trained using more than thousands of GPUs, and Google Bard as well, it was trained around using around 10,000 GPUs. So the key takeaway here is that the distributed training is a necessitated trend. And with that, I'll move on to simple backgrounds. So now we know we should split the data and model. And how to do it is called a parallelization strategy. So model parallelism, we split the model to reduce the memory footprint for each NPU and distribute them across different NPUs. On the other hand, another dominant parallelization data parallelism split the data across pieces and distribute them across different NPUs to speed up the training. And now, because the model and data are split, the MPUs should communicate with each other as well. So because of all these aspects, it's the result of this complex design space of distributed training. All the way up is the actual DNM models and how they are parallelized, and all the way down is the actual physical metric layer where you can even observe like how buffering, flow control, and arbitration matters. And in the middle is the system layer moving these two. So to summarize, the design space of distributed training is really large and very complex. That's why in SPAS 2020, we introduced AstraSim, a framework to navigate this design space. So given the complex design space of distributed training, AstraSim faithfully models and simulates this design space. So the workload layer on top supports the explained data parallelism, model parallelism, and some hybrid of these two. And the system layer simulates various collective communications like ring-based or tree-based collectives. And it also simulates various scheduling policies. And the bottom is the network layer where you can modify and observe various topologies and flow control, congestion controls, and so forth. And using the capabilities of Astrosum, we conducted various studies like how communication and training looks like on a complex system like Torus 3D or switches with various configurations, or the combination of these two. So the key takeaway here is that AstraSim can capture and simulate this complex design space of distributed training within a fairly short amount of time. But we figured it out its limitation since its introduction in 2020. So after the introduction of AstraSim, we've seen a number of emerging futuristic platforms out there. So for example, the dominant parallelization strategy is not just model parallel and data parallelism anymore. We see more complex parallelism strategies like pipeline parallelism. And it's not just simple switches anymore. A lot of companies are using complex multi-dimensional networks to drive and speed up the network capacity. And finally, novel memory technologies were introduced like CXL. And they are used extensively like to expand your local memory or even creating a disaggregated remote memory pool as a capacity expansion. 
But unfortunately, Astrosim, the original Astrosim, failed to model these futuristic training platforms. It only supported rigid set of parallelization strategies, so it failed to capture the modern parallelizations. It only supports some predefined set of metric topologies, and their scale is also very limited. And finally, we didn't have any memory system modeling at the time. So consequently, Astrosim wasn't able to model these emerging training platforms. <coughs> That's why in this year, it's best we are introducing Astrosim 2.0. And this is the overview of our presented Astrosim 2.0. Instead of just choosing from rigid set of parallelization strategy, we substitute that uh, workload layer with a graph-based execution engine. So now you can represent any parallelization in a graph-based format and run them. And we update the network layer to support multi-dimensional networks at scale. And we also offer flexible ways to represent multi-dimensional topologies and we simulate them via analytical metrics. And finally, we add the memory system modeling via memory API so that we can capture both local memory and remote memory accesses. Now I'll first visit the graph-based execution engine. So now, instead of just choosing from specific set of parallelization, predefined parallelization, now you can represent any arbitrary parallelization strategies of your interest in a graph format, which we call execution traces. So this is one example. Let's say the workload first wants to fetch some data from memory. Then after this memory is fetched, the computation, which is based on these, can happen. And after these computations finishes, you can either initiate peer-to-peer -peer communication, or you can fetch another data from the memory, or you can even initiate some only just collected communication. So the key takeaway here is that now you can represent any parallelization of your interest in this simple graph format with memory, compute, and communication nodes. And we also offer some easy way to, to get collect the state uh, execution graph from PyTorch models. So given your PyTorch running time runtime code, you can add these simple lines of code to start the execution trace collection. And after running your PyTorch model, you can just store the execution traces that was just reported into a simple JSON file. Next is the multidimensional metric fabric. Instead of just giving you the option to choose between 3D torus and some configurations of switches, now we offer three basic building blocks to build up multidimensional metrics. They are ring, fully connected, and switch. And we deliberately chose them because they are known to have their own corresponding topology or collective algorithm, which doesn't run, which doesn't make network contention when running collectives on them. And by stacking these building blocks up, you can represent very large set of network multi-dimensional topologies. For example, if you stack up two dimensional switches that represents NVIDIA's DGX like systems. Whereas if you stack up rings, that's basically multi-dimensional torus representing the Google's cloud TPU network. And you can, using the same location, you can also capture Meta Xeon or Intel's Avana architecture as well. And to model these multi complex multi-dimensional multi-dimensional metrics at scale, we also offer analytical equation-based network backend. So whenever a communication is initiated, instead of simulating all the minute details of the network, we just estimate the message link, the messages link delay and serialization delay and add them up. By modeling communication in this way, it's only working when the network doesn't have much contention, but this is satisfied thanks to the deliberate choose of building blocks and the existence of topology reflective communication, which doesn't create any network contention. Then finally, we offer the memory API to model emerging memory systems. So using memory API, you can use it to model both remote and local memory models. So local memory model, just like the analytical network backend, models any metric operation via some simple analytical equations. And by mixing and matching those multiple local memory, me memory accesses, you can implement your own interest of remote memory models as well. 
And finally, we offer the in-switch collective communication capabilities as well. So the key takeaway here is that AstraZen 2.0 can model futuristic training characteristics. And using the added capabilities, we run some case studies. The first case study is comparing the conventional and wafer scale systems. The conventional training clusters are connecting a number of commodity GPUs using some multidimensional methods. Whereas the wafer scale style is to connect a number of chiplets using very low dimensional 1D or 2D topology with very high bandwidth. And to model these, we create four sets of topologies where the first one dimensional and two dimensional topology is a proxy to wafer scale and thus they have very high bandwidth. And these 3D and 4D topologies are a proxy to the conventional systems and they have diminishing effort bandwidth thus. And this is the result when, when running multiple uh, workloads on these systems. Uh, running collective communication on multidimensional topologies has huge overhead. That's why when you compare the normal best run time, those one-dimensional topologies usually show the best running time. Though the conventional 4D system, because it has multiple physical network dimensions, they offer abundant network bandwidth resources for each MPU. That's why they are still powerful compared to those wafer scales. Next case study is observing the importance of chunk scheduling policies. As I mentioned, running multidimensional collectives on multidimensional collectives has huge overhead. That's why last year ISCA PEMIS, a 3D-based smart chunk scheduling policy, is introduced. More details can be found in the paper. By mix and matching the scheduling of the chunk in a smart manner, you can maximize the bandwidth resource utilization, even the network is multidimensional. So I run the very same workload on the very same set of systems, but with PEMIS enabled, and this is the result. So now these multidimensional topologies, thanks to PEMIS scheduling, get huge benefit. And now, because PEMIS virtually eradicates all the overhead associated with the multidimensional topology, now when you compare the one-dimensional one paper scale system and multidimensional conventional system, when they are offering the same amount of bandwidth for each MPU, they are showing near identical performance and 4D system as well. The wafer scale with 600 gigabytes per second and the 4D conventional system, which is also offering 600 gigabytes per second bandwidth, is showing the same, uh, uh, same uh, performance, meaning the importance of having smart scheduling is very important in multidimensional topologies. And finally, we compare different novel memory systems. Our baseline is zero infinity, where each node is using their NVMe storage as a memory capacity expansion tool. And we also designed this higher mem architecture where the GPUs are using both local memory and also remote memory disaggregated memory pool architecture. And with the zero infinity as a baseline, we add two versions of higher mem. The baseline version has the same configuration as zero infinity. And this higher mem opt is a fine-tuned version for higher mem architecture and also the in-switch collective communication enabled. And this is the result of running mixture of experts model on these systems. The result shows the zero infinity and the baseline higher mem is showing near identical performance meaning the remote memory pool can be safely used as a memory expansion, memory expansion, memory capacity expansion tool in training clusters. But with higher mem optimized version, thanks to the in-switch collective communication and the fine-tuned configuration is showing much better performance. So the key takeaways from these case studies is that with using AstraZen 2.0, one can run design space exploration of such emerging training platforms of, of the interest. So here's my conclusion. So we need a framework to navigate the complex and large design space of distributed training, given that distributed training is an necessitated, unavoidable trend. That's why we introduced AstraZen 2.0, a framework meant to model futuristic emerging systems. 
by adding arbitrary variabilization strategy support multi-dimensional topology simulation at scale and, and adding memory API to model novel memory architectures. So with that, thanks for listening and I'm happy to take any questions.